Assalamualaikum and very good day to you all. Okay, my name is Dr. Umay Mahidi. Now we continue about the uh, subtopic of the chapter screw, which is the mechanics of power screw. Okay, all the content is taken from the book Shigli Mechanical Engineering Design. And all the images here I take from the randomly from Google Images. Okay. So what is a power screw actually? It's a device used in machinery to change angular motion into linear motion, usually to transmit power. Okay, family application include lead screws of uh, latches, screws for vices, press and jacks. Okay, so you see the differences between power screw and normal screw. Okay, this is a normal screw, example of a normal screw. Okay, this is a bolt. What different is them is the thread is large now. Thread is large and also big. Okay, large and big, meaning that it can transmit power because of the uh, this thread is big. It can transmit more power to them. Okay, that is why they use uh, power screw. And some of you may remember. Uh, Angle, uh, what is mean by angular motion into linear motion? The bevel gear. You remember the bevel gear? Okay. The subject that you have learned uh, in the last last uh, few weeks. Okay. This is a some sort of mechanism. This is a power screw this is a uh, this kind of thing is called a, this is a bevel gear okay this is a power screw screw bevel gear transmit power in angular motion transmit energy in angular motion where does the energy come from the power come, come from, from the handle. The handle is like this. You remember one mechanism that you have to uh, crank. You have to crank, okay, like that. And then the it, the handle is attached to the bevel gear. And the bevel gear is attached to the power screw. And this power screw, we do some rotation to do the other things, okay. That is the what you mean by angular motion. Okay, example given in the textbook is a power driven jack. You see here, you see here, the jack can lift uh, many uh, ton, at least one ton. This this uh, picture the given in the I take from internet, I take from Google Images. This power jack can uh, can lift. One ton, two ton, okay. Don't ordinary gear like this, ordinary screw like this, cannot. It does does not have power to, to uh, to lift such heavy load like that. Only power screw can, okay. And he you see here, here the mechanism, it is a uh, transferring the angular motion, okay. Angular motion to the power gear like here, and then. This is what they mean by angular uh, motion. Okay, the uh, ninety degrees, ninety degrees angle. Okay, power screw nomenclature. Okay, so that uh, you can refer it standardly. If uh, if you are in another country, also they are referring for the to the same thing. This is the nomenclature, standard nomenclature used for for all people. For all industry and, and and everything, okay. So I don't have the power screw with me. Let's say this is a power screw. The toy I am holding is uh, I want to express the nomenclature using this uh, toy, okay. The diameter is this. This is the diameter called the DM mean diameter, okay. It is in between the pitch, okay, and the root, okay. It is uh, okay. It is called the mean diameter. When I let, let's draw it. Okay, 
this is called the M. This is the, the center and this is the diameter DM. Okay. And a pitch. Okay. This is a pitch. No. This is called a pitch. Okay. If you can I can draw it. If I can draw it. Okay. And this portion is the diameter. Okay. DM. And this is a pitch. The pitch. Okay. The pitch is from the root base. Okay. Because it's, it's actually a cylinder. No? A cylinder with a pitch. This is a pitch. Okay. And this. And the pitch. P. Okay. This is a pitch. Okay, called P. And uh, the PHP lead, lead angle. What is a lead angle? Like I shown in the previous video before, I'm showing now. Let's say I mark one. Okay. Lead angle alpha. Uh, no, the lead angle. Oh, no, no. That is, that is the different definition. Uh, that is the definition for L, length. Okay, not given here, but I just want to say the length, length, travel length is when if you mark this and then you rotate, the rotate until you meet the mark again. This is the travel length of the thread. Okay, and then the pitch angle. Okay, there are different... Um, because the okay you have this and also you have uh, you have lead angle okay okay you have the angle you add also have uh, helix angle the difference is that okay you see the difference between here okay you want to find the lead angle also you want to find find the uh, helix angle okay now we have diagram of power screw okay when you're talking about uh, this topic first diagram of power screw it involves raising the load and lowering the load pr here use the word pr here r raise stand for raise raise l PL stand for low, lower, okay? Raise, raise, and his here is lower, okay? Raising and lowering the load, okay? So we it, it we're talking about raise first. When, it, when we are raising the load, the force is high. And the frictional force is also happen here. It's F. F here stand for friction. Okay. Frictional force. Okay. So, and this is normal force. This is the lead angle. This is the force. Okay. The concept here is when you are raising the load. Okay. When you are raising the load, you put the force. You put the force P is the load, okay? You make it uh, raise, okay? You make you raise it, okay? And the opposite uh, force is the uh, frictional force, okay? Times the load, okay? Meaning all things, of course, you, uh, we have the friction, okay? And then when you release the load, the load is not that high to lowering, lowering the load, okay? Just want to maintain, uh, to avoid slipping, to avoid that mechanism to fall down rapidly, okay? The, uh, that is why the friction is uh, crucial for lowering the load, okay? So this is the force diagram for the power screw.
Okay, now we're uh, talking about raising and lowering the load, the equation related to it. Okay, so I have, uh, uh, I have written here in the whiteboard, okay, the force X equals to raising the load P and normal force and sin the angle minus friction times the uh, force, okay, normal force, then force lead angle equal to zero. And then for the y direction, force, negative force. Force here is the force of the load. Okay, if your load is 100 kilo, the force is 100 uh, times the uh, gravity, you get 100, uh, uh, 1000, nearly 1000 newton. Okay, okay, minus air friction, and is the load that given to the screw. Okay, force given, uh, load. Normal force given to the screw, okay, and then uh, normal force cos uh, lead angle equals to zero. And when you are lowering the load, okay, friction force is uh, more greater because you want want to avoid them to become sleeping, for right down uh, fall down rapidly, okay. So negative PL negative uh, N sin alpha uh, sin lead angle plus friction. Uh, N is normal force, cos lead angle equal to zero, and then negative F, the force, okay, plus friction times the uh, normal force, sin lead angle plus normal force, sin cos uh, lead angle equals to zero. Okay, that's the equation. Uh, don't worry, the equation is given in the textbook. If you have the textbook with you, uh, you can refer it anytime. Even in the examination, uh, most university will give the equation to you as long as you know where uh, to get the equation and how to use the equation. It, it, it is matter like that. Okay. Since we are not interested in the normal force, okay, we eliminate it from each of the set equation. The soft result for P, uh, for the load P, for raising the load, this gives PR. P, again, PR is for raising. Okay, P R equals to force sin lead angle plus friction cos lead angle over cos lead angle minus friction sin lead angle. This is the raising the load. Okay, and then we are lowering lower the load. The equation will be force F cos lead angle minus friction uh, sin lead angle cos lead angle minus friction sin lead angle. Okay, this is the equation given uh, to raise the load and lower the load and the force. Just to remind me, the, the, you, the force is the uh, the force that you want to lift. If if you are lifting 100 kilogram of um, mass, okay, just times the uh, with gravity 9.81, you get nearly 1,000 newton. Okay, 1,000. This is the force. Okay, this is the force uh, to to raise, and this is the force to lower the the load. Okay, and then friction plays a crucial role because every uh, every angle of the thread must have friction okay because we don't want it to become accidentally rapidly going down it is very dangerous okay so friction plays an important role for this kind of uh, power screw okay next divide the numerator and denominator of this equation by cos lead angle and use the relation tangent lead angle equals to L over pi dm. Okay. And then you get this equation. Uh, force uh, length over pi dm plus friction. Uh, 1 minus friction uh, L okay, over pi dm. And this is the uh, raising the load. And this is the lowering the load. The load. Okay. Force uh, friction minus L over pi dm over okay 1 plus friction L over pi
pi dm. Okay, I want to explain what is the meaning by uh, this relation tangent relation to L over pi dm. Okay, you remember the previous slides, okay, the one that defined the definition about the uh, pitch angle, uh, the diameter and everything. Okay, tangent is, you know tangent equation uh, A, B and C, tangent B over A. So this is tangent B over A and tangent is L over pi dm. Okay, remember the length L, where is the L? Okay, let's say this is a screw. Okay, you you mark, okay, you mark one place here. I mark this here and then I rotate. I rotate and until I get the mark, the perimeter, how many centimeter it travel, how many millimeter it travel, this is the L. Okay. And then the dm is the pi dm is the diameter of this screw. Okay, diameter of where is the screw? Okay, diameter of this screw. Okay, so this is how you get the definition uh, L over pi dm. So when when we are dealing with cylindrical uh, cylindrical parts like this. And also, you know that this nickel part will be moving, will rotate. Of course, it have torque. Okay. Of course, this mechanism have torque. As you remember, in the in the mathematics class, in the static class, uh, torque equals to force times the radius. Force times the radius. So, okay. So if you have a wheel, your your bicycle wheel, and your uh, your uh, car wheel. Okay, the car wheel is heavier. The bicycle wheel is lighter. Okay, you can easily lift the bicycle wheel with your hand. Okay, about the car wheel, the car wheel is heavier. Okay, the wheel itself is heavy, many kilograms. Huh? Okay, you want to push it. Okay, you want to push the the car wheel. Okay, it is heavier, so it requires uh, the torque to push it is heavy. Okay, times the radius and everything. There is a basic concept for torque. So, since we want to raise the load, we have to overcome the track friction, and also we want to raise the load. And remember, there are many friction here, many track here. Okay. Many thread here, so you have to overcome many, many friction of this, of this uh, uh, thread. Okay, so the equation given here, it basically it come from this equation force times radius. So when we derive force and all uh, pi dm over two l plus pi dm, all we talking about radius. Okay, only force here and r represents pi dm over 2 uh, in bracket L plus pi, uh, pi friction diameter over pi diameter minus uh, uh, friction times lead and uh, lead okay and the same goes for lowering the road okay okay you get this question if uh, when you follow the previous slide you will come up to this equation the force. This is uh, important because you want to know what is the motto you want to buy. Okay, what is the uh, what is the motto if we, uh, you want to buy to to lift that mechanism? Okay. Okay. Just remember, sometime when you are uh, you are opening some valve, you are like for example, I'm opening this my water okay the force force required to to at the initial force required to overcome the thread is high okay i need some effort to uh, to overcome this okay once once i overcome the initial uh, force it is easy i can it is easy to move okay i can easy easy to move okay this is called the screw 
through spinning without effort. I take this uh, picture, of course, in a space shuttle. Just I want to represent that uh, the screw can be spin like this. Okay. Actually, in practical, just imagine the situation like this. And when you opening any screw, any when you bought water bottle like this, it is hard at first. And once you overcome that initial, it is easy to you. It's easy to 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 overcome it because the friction is low. Okay, because the torque required to overcome the part of friction low in the load. Meter out the it may turn out a specific instance where the lead is large or the friction is low. The load will lower itself because into the screw to spin without external effort. Okay, so. This is what they want to tell about this slide. Now we're talking about self-locking screw. They use the positive torque, okay? Meaning that also they have negative torque, okay? Okay, I read the I read it first. Then I explain and I explain about positive torque and negative torque. When a torque positive is obtained from this equation, the screw is said to be self-locking. You see the picture I take from Google, okay? This is a screw. And they put some plastic here to make it self-locking. It is also another definition of uh, self-locking, meaning that when, let's say this uh, this water can, I I put effort and then I close it tightly. Okay, when I close it tightly, it cannot be tightened again. Okay, with my hand, if I using machinery, if also if it can. It can be forced, but it will damage this uh, this water can. Okay, my hand, the force given to the force given by my hand to tighten up this uh, water water bottle. Okay, um, I make it self locking. Okay, I make it self locking. This we call positive stop. Okay, when I open up this, when I open up. It will call negative torque. Okay. So condition for self-locking is this. Uh, it's mathematically given by this equation. Pi uh, friction dm uh, is more than the lead angle. Now divide this both sides. This inequality by pi dm. Recognize L over uh, pi dm. From the previous slide, I just uh, have explained to you. Then we get friction. If friction is more than uh, tangent uh, tangent lead angle, it will be self-locking. Okay, this is how the mathematics says lah. But in practical life, when you tight, you cannot go anymore. You cannot tight tighten anymore. It is self-locking. But this how this is how mathematics physics uh, tell you about something. It, it will give some equation. Okay. Okay. Like just I said, if uh, uh, the force required to overcome the friction, okay, you know that the thread, okay, they have many threads, and all these threads have friction. Okay. So we want to calculate the efficiency. So friction happen. Okay, friction happen. So we cannot neglect efficiency, but uh, we cannot neglect friction. But let's say. We make friction as zero. Let's say in an ideal condition, there is no friction. Okay, when the friction is zero, we can easily uh, obtain the torque at uh, friction zero. That is called T zero. Okay, equals to force uh, uh, lead angle length over two pi. Okay, see which string since the thread friction has been limited, it's not required only to raise the the load. The thread efficiency is called uh, FL equals to 2 pi torque raise. Only torque raise. Okay. Uh, okay. In the preceding equations, uh, the preceding equation have been developed for square threads where the normal threads loads are parallel to the axis of screw. Remember, there are two kind of thread. Okay. The square thread and the acme thread. This is Acme's thread. This is square thread. The, the equation that we developed before is for square thread. Okay. 
uh, in the case of acme or other threads the normal thread low is inclined to the axis because of the of the thread angle to alpha and the lead angle uh, lead angle okay since the lead angle are small the inclination can be neglected and only affect the thread angle okay the effect of angle alpha is to increase the frictional force by wedging action of the threads therefore frictional terms must be divided by force and uh, for the raising the load or like tightening a screw or bolt it is um, is this equation for the raising of load force uh, time dm per over 2 dm the diameter dm is the diameter of the uh, thread times the length of the uh, thread is plus uh, pi friction dm second uh, alpha pi dm 1 minus uh, for friction L second alpha okay so you have to find out how to calculate second in uh, your calculator okay uh, this is challenge to you okay, okay for acme thread uh, for acme thread versus square thread acme thread is not efficient as square thread okay because additional friction due to wedging action this is wedging action Okay, this is a wedge. Okay, this geometry is called a wedge. Okay, so for a wedge, okay, if you calculate the the uh, area, the area, the contact area with this square and the contact area with uh, a wedge, more contact area happen at wedge. Okay rather than uh, square okay so that is why more friction uh, happen at that position okay however uh, acme thread is more preferred because easier to machine and for me do uh, the use of split nut we can uh, adjust to take up for a wear okay so many people using this okay for application that need higher force they have to use the uh, the square thread Truss and collar thread. Okay, usually a torque component of torque must be applied to power square application. When the torque is loaded easily, a truss or collar bearing must be employed between the rotating and stationary uh, stationary members in order to carry the axial component. Okay, where is the collar? This is the collar. Okay, this is the collar. Okay, everything that resemble like this is have have a collar the same goes like this this is a collar okay when you when you tighten up when you tighten down the screw you are giving the axial force going down okay axial force going down so this axial force is a thrust force okay and then it involves the collar uh, the thrust collar sometime if you give the force too much you can see the bending the bending at the at the surface okay let's say when you give the force you can see will be with your eye the bending okay it should not happen this bending yeah uh, you if bending happen that you can you should uh, release some bit of force to make it uh, to make it a flat surface Okay, to make the, this is the collar. Uh, good. Okay. If uh, if you spread, you give the force so much, it will become bending for the surface, then you should release the force. Uh, this is the collar. Okay, the collar given by the equation torque uh, force uh, times the friction of the collar times the diameter of the collar. Okay. Uh, minus 2 okay so for this case the diameter of color this is the diameter of color you should you you, you measure this is the diameter of the color nominal body stress okay nominal body stress in power screw can be related to track parameters as follow the maximum normal stress in torsion a screw body and the screw body can be expressed by shear stress equals to 16 t pi over pi dr uh, cube okay t is the torque that you have uh, calculated before okay and dr is the root 
let, let, let me remind you the cylind the screw is actually uh, cylindrical lah. Okay, this cylindrical and we give you give uh, the thread is uh, inside it on it it become a screw and it, it is a pitch. So the root of screw is the is the cylindrical body. Okay, let this is the cylindrical body. Okay, this is the root dr. Okay, and when you give the thread here, it become the thread become dm and and anything. Okay, so okay, so dr stand for the root diameter. Okay, you measure the root diameter only up until before the thread. Okay, diameter before the the thread. Diameter any diameter before the thread that is the uh, uh, the root diameter. Okay, so the exit stress on the body of screw due to load is 4F uh, over pi dr square. Okay, so this is the equation given. Okay, just use the equation given here. Uh, equation 8, 8, uh, 8. This is 8, 7 and this is 8, 8. Okay, what does it mean? Actually, means by uh, the shear stress. Sometimes, if you given too many load uh, inside the on the screw, the screw will break away. Okay, the screw will break, break, will break away. I have seen the screw uh, with my experiment using uh, some tools, and my screw is broken. Also, my screw is bending. Okay, so this kind of thing happen because uh, the force given. Uh, to that screw, the shear force is so high, okay, and it will break the screw. It will it will break the screw in two half. Uh, this is called the uh, 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 the shear stress. Okay, you want to avoid it, okay. Buckling short column, okay. Uh, you have learned about buckling in another subject, uh, the machine uh, machine design uh, from. Uh, no, not the machine design, the solid mechanic too, from the book Hibler. If you have the book Hibler, the book Hibler has better explanation about the screw, uh, about the buckling. Okay, we have the whole chapter about the buckling. Okay, so talking about buckling, okay, the screw is short. Okay, the screw is short. So at, at normal condition, it does not buckle. Okay. Buckling happen when you have tremendous load, and this load will make it will make the uh, will make that element to buckle become pancake. Okay, they become pancake, it become sandwich, become pancake. That is like that. So, uh, buckling may happen in short screw. Okay, like this. Is is a short screw. This is a this is a long screw, relatively long. Okay, because it have a, a diameter is short. Okay, this is a big diameter. But if uh, we talking about this, okay. So if if more force given here, okay, more load given here, it exceeding the load, it may become pancake. It may become sandwich. Okay, so this is the critical load given from the equation uh, from chapter four. Critical load. This is critical load five uh, pi uh, square e i e is the Young modulus, i is the moment of inertia, l is the length length of the. This is the length, eh? length of the screw. So we uh, using this uh, equation. Okay, force over A for critical load. This is the yield strength. Okay, this is yield strength over minus uh, yield strength over 2 pi L over K. K is the uh, K is the strength concentration factor. Okay, I over C is critical load. This is the Young modulus. Okay, of course, I'm holding a toy. Okay, the Young modulus of the toy is nothing to compare with the steel okay the steel meaning that if i give the load to this toy this toy will break away okay uh, 
the most important thing is the yang modulus. You must choose the the proper screw, the proper design of screw, and the proper material for the screw so that you can avoid uh, buckling. Okay. okay, what is bending stress and what is uh, bearing stress? So, bearing stress is the uh, stress when two bodies are contacted. Okay, this is one body. When it when you put the screw inside, uh, when you let's say you screwing a plate, okay, this screw combined with a plate. Okay, this is a screw, and this is a plate. Okay, this is the screw. Okay. The contact area here, the contact area here, the contact point here is the bearing stress. Okay, so the bearing stress uh, is uh, represented by capital B. Okay, stress B here is a capital B. Okay, uh, is a negative uh, F over pi dm diameter with uh, times the n of thread the number of thread of course when you are putting here not all the thread is in contact now one two three thread other thread is not in contact okay you never let this count you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten thread here in contact is only one two three thread thread Let's say one, two, three, one, two, three thread is only in contact. Other thread is not in contact. So that is the number of thread, nt. Okay. So uh, times the p pitch over two, not the load. Tau. P here is the pitch. Okay. Pitch. Uh, when you calculate the length of the pitch, eh? you measure the length of this this pitch. Okay. And then you get the uh, answer, okay? Negative uh, 2F uh, over pi dm, okay? And, and things. So, that is the bearing stress. Bearing stress, I just want to recap. It's a contact plate with a screw, okay? And thread is the number of thread. If you have uh, three thread in contact, it's, it's three, lah. okay? And then the bending stress, okay? The bending stress. Which is my ruler? It only it is bending. Okay, some application uh, the force is so great then uh, you make the screw bending, especially at this kind of screw. It become bending. Okay, so the equation for the bending is uh, given m per z. You can read here m over F, fp over four. Now we're talking about transverse shear stress. Transverse shear stress at the center of the road to the thread given to load F is given by transverse stress uh, equals to 3V over 2A. Okay, you get this equation 3F uh, pi dr, d, dr stand for the root, diameter and stand for the number of thread and P is the pitch. Okay, so what is actually transverse shear stress and where is actually transverse shear stress okay this is the this is the screw okay the shear stress is happen at the at the contact of the, the screw okay this is the thread okay this is the screw Thread that in contact is N. N thread is equals to 3. Let's say 3. Lah. 3 in contact. Other thread is not in contact. Okay. This contacted with the plate. Okay. We want to contact. We want to screw the plate. Okay. So let's say the screw is uh, thread in contact is 3 
only three three track in contact let's say okay and then you are contacting with the plate the force given here is the shear force when the symbol is w a uh, symbol is v this is the shear force in contact with this shear force meaning that if uh, the load is so heavy the uh, it may cut away the bolt head okay this is what we want to avoid Okay, in the previous slide, we are talking about the loads on the screw itself. The definition of the screw is the, the whole body of the screw. How about the load on the thread? This is the thread, the load on the thread itself. Okay, so when the thread is in uh, is in uh, lifting for lifting mode, actually it will be shortened. It will be shortened because the force required is so high, then essentially it, it, it shortened the screw we cannot see with our eye but we if you have the uh, microscope if you have the uh, um, uh, micrometer you can see you can see its differences okay and when the load is uh, lowering the load meaning that no load given the thread is lengthened become a bit a a bit uh, lengthy okay but we cannot see with your uh, with our eyes we uh, we, we use micrometer maybe we can see it okay uh, some experiment shows that the first engaged track carries 0 0.38 of the load second 0 0.25 the third 0 0.18 and the seven is free of load let's count how many thread here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there are ten thread in this toy Okay, given the load given uh, at this thread, at the thread, okay, at the first contact, give 0 0.38 load, okay, of the force, then uh, 0 0.25, then 0 0.18, and at the bottom of one, no load given, because usually, it become left hanging. If you contact with the plate, okay, you, the load we contact with the plate, let's say two three plates okay this is one plate this is another plate this the bottom one does not in contact with anything so that is free of free of load this is what uh, they mean okay so the first thread is the uh, will 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 endure the highest load given to the thread okay screw thread Okay, so Hans and Ryan, you can see uh, the difference in uh, the references in the textbook. Hans and Ryan, the paper, original paper uh, about this coefficient of school, school thread. They show that the coefficient of school, coefficient of school thread is independent of as a load, practically independent of speed, decreases with heavier lubricant, shows little variation with combination of material as best uh, for steel on bronze. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, meaning that the friction doesn't care what how many load given 100 kilogram, 200 kilogram, 300 kilogram, one ton it doesn't care. Okay, it also doesn't care about speed. You rotate it with higher speed, with lower speed, it doesn't care. Okay, it only care about uh, the friction decrease with high, heavier lubricant. Meaning that if you Put the lubricant let's say this kind of lubricant i take this picture from google okay the lubricant for the power screw uh, it will decrease the friction because the friction uh, will give uh, uh, some cost to your uh, to your operation okay if you do not do proper maintenance for your machine uh, the machine will have the uh, more friction happen and more force required let's say uh, if you do proper maintenance the fuel consumption is is let's say ten dollar electrical consumption only 100 watt let's say lah. then uh, if you do proper lubricant it, it will go down the cost and if you do not do proper lubricant you will 
your maintenance cost will be high. Okay, so uh, do proper maintenance for your uh, power screw. Okay, given in table 8.4 is the safe bearing pressure on thread. Okay, uh, to protect the moving surface from abnormal wear. Okay, this is the safe bearing pressure given from uh, from this uh, table. Okay, this is only a suggestion. You should follow uh, what is they suggested because sometimes uh, if more thread, um, let's say you are using power screw, uh, you are using power screw, the force you give to that screw, uh, you cannot control the force. Okay. Let's say you are using this, okay, and then when you are rotating this, you you do not aware how much force given to that screw. It may it may exceed the uh, exceeding force and maybe damage your thread. Maybe your thread will be damaged. So uh, use it, use this the thing properly. Okay, use this power screw. A power tool pro uh, properly because you don't want to exceed it uh, is normal uh, is forced and maybe you will damage the thread coefficient of sliding friction table at four shows a safe bearing pressures on thread to protect the moving surfaces for abnormal wear okay table at five shows the coefficient of uh, sliding friction okay here is table at five Coefficient of sliding friction for common material pair. Okay, uh, what is a coefficient of uh, of friction? It means that when both are in contact, like this, try the okay. In some cases, okay, in some cases, it will accidentally uh, disassembly. Okay, is we accidentally disassembly. We do not want that. Okay, this is uh, the coefficient for sliding friction. Okay, you may want to use this when you are doing the calculation. Okay, table at point six shows the coefficient for starting and running friction for common material foil uh, pairs. Okay, this is thrust collar friction coefficient eight point eight six. The running and starting. Okay. When you want to, when you want to uh, pull the screw, okay, you want to pull the screw. This is the friction. Okay, this is the friction. You, you will uh, use this during the calculation time. Okay. So that's all for this video. It's very lengthy video, nearly fifty minutes. Uh, okay. So I hope you can bear with me. This is the terms uh, nomenclature. The if you this slide you need understanding. This slide um, uh, try to hear it many times. Okay, I try my best to explain to you the concept of the screw. So in the next video we are doing the example. Okay, example eight one. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, see you in the next video.